welcome to New Horizons. I'm Suzanne Barnett, your host. And tonight, I, I can't even think of the word except thrilled. I am so thrilled to introduce Joanne Callender, who is an extraordinarily talented and acclaimed international doll maker. And here she is. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. Joanne, I'm so happy that you're here. And first of all, I have to tell the audience, I have never in my life met a more talented artist than you. I can't believe how you do this. Tell us about well, yourself. Thank you. Well, I've been making dolls for about 28 years now. I make them in porcelain and resin. I do all of the work myself, do all my own mold making in both the porcelain and the resin. And I do all my sourcing, I do all of my costume design because I like total control. And uh, I just have a lot of fun and, and do what I love. Plus the fact that you're self-taught. Yes, I am. And we, I just want to ask you a couple of quick questions because we absolutely need to introduce this gorgeous stuff. When you were a child, did you know that you were going to do this kind of thing? I mean, what, what started you? Well, I certainly didn't know I would be a doll maker when I was a child. But uh, I think what I was, I think, inspired initially in childhood by the dolls that I would play with. I remember I didn't like their faces. I remember that always when I would get a new doll. I mean, she was a lot of fun, had cute clothes. But their faces were always kind of freaky looking to me. You know, these were the 1960s vinyl dolls. They always had those funny looking baby doll mouths. And I think that's what inspired me to make a doll that had a pleasing, realistic face and expression. And that would draw you in instead of repel you. <laughs> so let's start. Tell which wonderful doll do you want to start with? Well, I think it'd be nice to start with uh, where I started. I started with the porcelain dolls. And initially, I made them only with very simple joints. But starting just a couple of years ago, I started making them uh, with the all ball jointed. And like this doll over here, that's one of my very right first little porcelain dolls. She's all porcelain, and she has 14 joints, 14 or 15, I can't remember. And uh, inset eyes, I make the eyes myself. And her wig is made of lamb's wool, which I twist and dye and do all that myself too. But and she's sitting on a handmade chair. You make the chairs. I made the chair. Also, what I can't get over, they all have underwear. Yes. And the shoes, I, I wonder if the camera can get the shoes. I mean, you do every speck of the work yourself. Mm -hmm. Why do you do it? I can't believe <laughs> I don't know. There, it. It's there's so a, a, a zen to doing things in miniature. You can really get lost in it and you know, let time pass by. And the part that I really enjoy the most is when you get down to the tiny little tiniest details, like doing the little beating on her chair and doing her wigs. I really enjoy that. And that wig probably takes about 10 hours to make her little wig. Just the wig. Just the wig. Just the wig. And, you and that's just the twisting. That's not you know, the sorting and the dyeing, because that I buy my wool fresh off the sheep. So you know you, you need to clean it and, and dye it and do all of that. And then you twist it into those little twisties and, and make her wig. How are your eyes doing these days? They're not as good as they were <laughs> when I started, but uh, you know, they're OK. I have to use glasses now, so I spend half of my time looking for my glasses. But you know, I, yeah. I, I get it done. OK. So what else do you want to talk about, the next thing? Well, uh, the next phase, I, I made little child dolls for many, many years. And this is my first porcelain uh, adult doll. This and, one down here. Yes, and I proportioned her to be like, the adult version of this size. And she's about nine inches, just under nine inches tall. And she also has 14 uh, points of articulation. And again, you know, the handmade wig and the handmade clothing. And I do my own bead work. I do my own bead loom work. And the loom? Yes, that's fun. Joanne, you know the first time I met you, I thought that you reminded me of a Tennessee Williams heroine. Oh, I remember you saying that. I know <laughs> that. And the other thing is that your doll's faces look like you. They do. I don't know about the spider, 
but <laughs> <laughs> but the dolls, they really do. So this doll is, uh, she's a new one. Yes, and she is also you know, all porcelain and... Uh, What's the difference between porcelain and resin? Porcelain is, it's actually, it's a natural compound, it's a silica mud. So you, you, when you make a porcelain doll, you start with a big jug of mud. So that's really when it, you know, it's magic when you got this jug of mud and I look at that and it's all over the place and I get it all over everything and I can take a jar of mud and make that. And you pour it into plaster molds and the, the plaster soaks the excess water out of the, the loose liquid clay. And so after a few minutes, you can unmold it and you can get out like a semi-solid doll part. So what you are is a sculptor. Also. Yes. Yes. And you have to sculpt, you know, the original part to make the mold. So I, I do all of that too. I don't, you know, purchase anything. Everything is all my original work. And how long have you been a doll maker? About 28 years now. Do you, I mean, is it still so exciting that you're going to continue? Yes. And uh, to keep it exciting, that's why I branch out into different media and the resin. And then I started making critters because now, you know, my dolls look kind of alone. So you start <laughs> not just making dolls in cute costumes. Now I want to make kind of a world so they can live in this world. And so, yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. And so you, how do you get your ideas? I mean, how does that happen? I think a lot of my ideas, and I, I've lived in the uh, country for 46 years. You know, so I garden, I see spiders, I see chickens, and, you know, I, I think that is uh, certainly the inspiration for a lot of my work, just, you know, seeing the things around me and kind of expanding on it and making big fantasy chickens and, you know, horses, and, you know, it's all part, becomes part of my work. And you don't take drugs either. No, not yet. <laughs> so it just, but it just comes It's natural. To, it's, it's all natural. Yes. Okay, this is probably one of my favorites. Tell about the spider. Well, the spider, I... This guy. Yeah, well, he was inspired again by my garden. He's, uh, you know, I see we're going to be getting tomato plants ripe soon, and we always have those giant garden spiders that pop up, and they're, you know, like that. And so I just thought, you know, they, they always look kind of jointy anyway, so I thought he would be a nice uh, subject to make all bowl jointed. And, and so he was really challenging, and I'm always up for a challenge. Now, let me ask you, uh, is it more difficult to make this ball joint? Yes, than to make any... Than, than just yes, a you straight be, leg has, or... Right, yeah. right, because you, everything has to fit and everything has to be balanced. And uh, I'm not the best engineer in the world, so I gotta, you know, make a prototype and try it out. It doesn't work. I gotta go back to the drawing board. But eventually, uh, and he's still a work in progress. Uh, I like the way he looks, but I don't really like the way he functions yet. That's why he needs to sit on his uh, his log. I see. I really, when I designed him, I wanted him to be able to stand freely. That's how I pictured it in my mind. And since he's not the picture in my mind yet, I'll work okay, on him some more, so, and I'll get there. Okay, good. And what about this guy? This one right here. Well, this one, this, this, the chick was inspired by, you know, again, you know, on the farm, you see the, the face is probably quite chicken-like, although I think he kind of is maybe more ostrich-like. <laughs> and the feet with the pigeon toes, that's a direct reference to this, this old goose that I had. And she always would stand with her, her feet like that and used to make me laugh because she'd trip herself. And so that found its way into my, my comical bird. I see. Tell about the hair. The hair is, it's called Tibetan lamb. I don't know what that animal actually looks like. I purchased that. But the curl is natural. I dye it and take off little tiny tufts and just painstakingly, and it takes hours again, make these little wigs for my dolls. And it's nice that the curl is, is a nice scale for the dolls, so I really like the Tibetan lamb. And then you have to, you do all of this, and you even dye the hair. Yes. Why do you do that? Because I, I, I want them to look the way I want them to okay, look. Okay, <laughs> okay. So that's that's the uh, impetus. Tell about that slutty little lady. Oh, man. Isn't well, that, she? That is my first, you know, again, I wanted to challenge myself. And this I already, one right here. This. Yeah. And she's, uh, she's what they call double-jointed. And I wanted to try that, and you know, because I wanted to challenge myself. I made this doll, and I considered double jointing her, but uh, I decided not to go there. But I, another year later, I wanted to make this one, and she has She's fabulous. You no, know, it does give her more f fluid posing. Yes. But I'm not sure I like the way it looks. 
It's so fabulous. I'm, thank I'm you. sorry. I love her. And I, she's fun to pose, though. I got to say that's that. That's it. It is. And, and she, she does you know, her poses. She holds her pose as well. And she can get into a lot of crazy predictions, as, as you can see. I can see she's that. She's all personality. But uh, if I make more of her, I'll probably work on her design, too. Now, tell how you make that. Is that a chaise lounge? Yes. Okay. You made that. And look at their, t I don't know if the camera can get these tiny, tiny little crystals. You even mm -hmm. do that. That probably takes me 10 hours. <laughs> Just to put the Just crystals on. Just to put the crystals on, on yes. So how, but again, that's the fun part. Is because, it really? Yes, because you know I can just get lost in that. And I made that chair last night. And it took me about 10 hours. I watched several movies while I'm putting these little tiny little beads on. I put them all on one at a time. Joanne. And, uh, but to do the original chair, I got to, you know, I get a basic idea of what I want the shape to be. Mm -hmm. And I sculpted a chair. And then you make the mold, it's a rubber mold for the resin, and then cast it myself. So, uh, is, which is a more difficult element to work with, resin or porcelain? Uh, porcelain is more difficult. It is. And it's, uh, it's more challenging because in order to get the detail, you have to put more time into it than you do the resin. And it's just, uh, you know, fragile. Certainly in the unfired stage, it's very fragile. Whereas resin is, you know, it's more durable. It's got some flexibility. And for instance, when I make the face on the resin dolls, she comes out of her mold with all of her facial details. I mean, she's got nostrils, she's got everything. But the porcelain dolls, they come out, they're almost like a blank. And you have to hand carve all of that into the doll. And I, you know, I got to can carve the ears and, and everything because I don't, I don't even try to get a lot of uh, detail in my porcelain molds. It's just not worth it. I would I, rather just carve it. I see. Okay. And each one comes out one of a kind that way too. And the little, the hands are so tiny. Mm -hmm. Do they break sometimes, the fingers? I don't break very many anymore. That was a problem when I was doing my first doll making. Mm -hmm. But then pretty soon, I think your hands, it's sort of like riding a bike, whereas when you ride a bike, your body learns how to do it. You never forget. My hands at first, this pinky finger was always flicking off the thumbs. Mm -hmm. But after, you know, doing a few hands, mm -hmm. it learned to behave itself. Mm -hmm. And I almost never break anything. And when I do break it, it's really because there was a, a tiny little flaw in the porcelain. It wasn't my fault. It was the porcelain. It was the porcelain. Thank it it didn't, didn't come out of the mold, right? Okay, tell about the, the little doggy. Well, the little doggy was kind of my answer to uh, making. I think we can pick him up. Yes. Oh, I just love this stuff. He's my response to making a baby doll. I didn't want to make a human baby doll. I wanted, and, and when I was a little girl, I used to like to dress the uh, cats and, and puppies, if I could get my hands on one, in doll clothes. So my idea here was to make my own little puppy doll. And he's like a baby doll where he's weighted and he's kind of baby-like, but he can wear human clothes without complaining. And I just have to show the back. This is a belt with little holes in it and a buckle. I mean, who's, who does that except you? <laughs> you are... And his pants, they're, it, this is like, he's, it's he's leather. My, he's my little tough guy. Yeah, this oh. is leather outfit. He just needs a oh. motorcycle. Maybe he, he would just chase a motorcycle. How come you don't but... have a motorcycle? I'm surprised. <laughs> That'll be your next project, oh, don't, right? don't get me started. No, no, no. It's just too good an idea. Now, tell about the Bat Girl. Well, the Bat Girl is, she's all resin. And uh, I first I, I made you know, the regular girl, and I just wanted to make something a little bit more fanciful. So I added the uh, little joints on her back here. I don't know if I want to try to pick her up and show you, but she does have some posability, and I kind of like she that because she can hug herself oh. or hug her lion. Oh look! She's a very very loving little sweet little bat girl. <laughs> don't fall off. Don't do it. There you go. And your lion. And my lion, uh, I designed him in, I think it was 2000. So I've been making lions for a while and he is all porcelain. Cause at the time I wasn't, I hadn't started working in the resin yet. So, you know, you work with what you know. So I just made him in all porcelain. But there's some material that's covering him. What yes, is that? That's called flocking and it's a rayon. It's sort of like velvet that if you shaved velvet, you'd get all these little microfibers and you put on an adhesive and then you put the flocking on. 
and I really like the way, you know, it softens them, it helps in their mobility and their posing, and I think makes them look really alive. I, I'm just totally blown away by this. Okay, tell about this one. Okay, this is an art piece that I made for a uh, exhibit in New York. It was the last time I went to New York in 2007. And my idea here was, and she's all resin with a wire armature, and my idea for this one was I started thinking about how fairies could possibly be born. So I started thinking, well, do they come from an egg? If they came from an egg, then you gotta think of the mother fairy. She has like an ovipositor, and maybe there's a larval stage, and that just sounded really gross and ugly, and I thought, well, fairies can't ever be gross or ugly. So I thought, well, how about if they just, you know, emerge like a sprout from a stem? So that was, that's what she's doing. She's, she's a leaf fairy and uh, she's emerging from the stem. The stem is her mother and she's almost about to get out. She's got a foot still stuck. She's almost free and she'll be okay as long as the spider doesn't get her first. Now, so it's just a little, I, I call this one peril. You know, it's like the peril of nature. Peril of it's, nature. It's very, very pretty, but you know, there, there's danger out there. But Joanne, let me ask you, you must do a lot of reading to get the knowledge to, you know, to the ideas, to get these stories, or do you make them up? I make them up. You make them up? Mm -hmm. I have a very rich fantasy life. Always have. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I just, I'm amazed. And I'm not at a loss for ideas. It's, it's a loss for time because all of this is, it takes a lot of time to make something, especially from oh, start to finish. You make the original, you make a mold, maybe it doesn't work, you go back to the drawing board. and So yeah, it takes a lot of time and, and I'm, it's often frustrating. The most frustrating thing about being, you know, doing what I'm doing is having endless ideas and not enough time in my lifetime to do them. So in other words, you, these ideas are still in your head. Sure. You don't ever get blanks. No. Really? Really. And it's just, <laughs> sometimes I'll, I'll write them down because sometimes I'll forget one. So I got mm -hmm. a list mm -hmm. where I'll just write down like a little note and I'll think, make a doll out of this and I'll just put a little note in. Sometimes I got to go back to my notes to refresh my, you know, my, my fantasy life. But ordinarily, I don't even spend a lot of time looking at those notes. I'll just go on to the next thing and, and have another idea. Now, how do you keep yourself so patient? Because it's so time consuming. I mean, I just, I'm an artist, but I couldn't do this for anything. I would want it done, you know, in an hour. How do you stick with it, Joanne? I don't know, that, that part is really easy. I don't, I don't allow myself enough time to indulge. I just love to be able to take something and just, you know, spend a month just doing that. And when I do something like this, that's exactly what I do. I will spend like months to put something yeah. like this. And, it's, and because it's, it's, it takes experimenting, because, you know, no one could tell me how to make something like this. I just have to try to figure it out. You get the vision in your head. And then I think, well, what can I make it out of? And so I start experimenting with different kinds of resins and different kinds of paints. and. And it's just, it's really a, uh, you know, very time consuming process, but it's, uh, it's an adventure. And I really love that part. I love the part of experimenting. My, my friends tell me that I'm like Frankenstein and I'm gonna <laughs> blow myself up someday. And uh, I all I need is that little thing in my workshop where it goes zzz, which I had yeah. one of those, but yeah, I yeah. love that. But yeah, yeah it, is, uh, it is fun to do all that experimenting and just figure it out. And it, it's so rewarding when, you know, this, looks just like I thought it would in my mind. And for most of my, or not most of my years, but for my very beginning years as a doll maker, I'd get the vision, but the reality, I'd have to compromise. It wouldn't quite look the same. I did not have the skills or the knowledge of the materials at that time. Mm -hmm. But no, as the years go by, I get those things. And now, you know, what I, I can think of anything and I can make it. So that must be so absolutely I can't think of anything that would could make a person feel better, really. It and is. God it, it knows is. you need to feel better. I mean, I just can't, I've never met anybody like you, really. I don't think Tennessee Williams had either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my final question, Joanne, is after you make all of these, I mean, I can't think of an adjective. How can you sell them? How can you give them up? 
Well, I know they go on to certainly better homes and I can provide for them because my whole home is a dusty, dirty, cluttery studio. I do have a few pieces of mine. I gotta keep them in a cabinet and maybe throw some mothballs in there once in a while. But, you know, it's not a nice place for them to live. And when, uh, when I talk with people who own my work, They've got them in these these lovely cabinets, and they're they're just priceless treasures to them, and and uh, so it, it's very rewarding to be able to to send them on to better homes. And also, once I you know sell a work, then it's gone, and I have this empty nest syndrome, which keeps me creative because you know like this little porcelain doll, the little pill in the pink, this one. she is sold, and I'm going to miss her so much when oh, she, she goes. Is sold. She is sold. And, uh, but when I sold her, the very day after I sold her, I got back to my studio and I started making another doll. And I hadn't, you know, been working in the porcelain for some weeks because, you know, I had my little baby, but now she's gonna be gone. So I have to make myself another one. So it makes you more creative to place it yeah, in yeah, homes. Yeah, well, you're very special. You really are. And you happen to be my fabulous, sister-in-law's sister. Yes. And I, this is such a treat for me, Joanne, because uh, I have bought two dolls from you, you know, and I treasure them. But I never thought I would have the opportunity to present to the world someone like you. I mean, and we are related in some mm -hmm. way, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. We are. We're family. Could you, could you teach me that? I wouldn't want to learn this, honey. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm a patient person, but this is... I is could teach you some little aspect of it, anything that, that you want to learn. It's so extraordinary. I could teach you to beat loom, I bet you'd like that. Really? Well, it you said you, you meditate. Yeah. I, think, I think bead looming is like meditating. Is and making it? those little wigs, that is like meditating. I think it's the same thing. I bet those same little alpha waves start going when you're doing something like that. Well, this probably has made you a very... Uh, special person because of your uh, your intellectual and your emotional mind? Really, how do you re relate to other people? Well, I'm an extremely bashful person. Well, but, you're uh, sure not on the show, well, my goodness. Yeah, I well, congratulate you, you're a star <laughs> already, and you're coming back. I, you, my favorite guests always come back and- Oh, thank you. Oh, of course. So what about your friends? I interrupted you. Well, uh, you know, it, it does, making dolls, I think, does get you in touch with your more vulnerable humanity because that's what dolls represent. They represent that uh, vulnerability. And I think that is the difference, in my mind anyway, between when it's a doll and when it's figurative art. Because I know a lot of doll artists that I talk about, they kind of go back and forth. Some of them want to be called figurative artists. I like to be called a doll maker. I think it's something very special and something beyond. I can do figurative art, but not all figurative artists can do dolls. I don't think so. Because you have to put in that element of, uh, you know, vulnerability. And, uh, and, you know, celebrating that makes me more have more empathy, I think, for people in general. I bet it And it does. makes me more uh, introspective. And uh, it just makes me more appreciative of even, you know, the physical beauty of people and animals. Because you're, you know, really tuned into that, really looking for the beauty and how the lines go together. And so. That's, that's a wonderful ex explanation. It really is. Oh, I just admire you so much. I've interviewed many, many, many artists but I've never had a doll maker, and I love dolls, but I'm too old to play with dolls. No, you're not. No, I'm not. I know, I know, I know. The oh, older we get, I think the more we I need I want them. you to tell the viewers, uh, we have it on the screen, but tell your web page because you even did your own web page. Yes, and if I they did. have a computer, it's, it's just, and it shows the process, which we couldn't do tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's Joanne, J? It's oh. J-O-A-N-N-E. Wait a minute. No, the website is calendardolls.com. C-A-L-L-A-N-D-E-R-D-O-L-L-S.com. Oh, that's it. Because I think what I did is put your email on. So say it uh, one more time, please. Calendardolls.com. Oh, that's easy. C-A-L-L-A-N-D-E-R. That's right. 
and you did the web page by yourself. I and did. And not only that, but you did these boxes. I did. I mean, <laughs> I have the best question to end the show. What can't you do? Uh, oh you should ask me that earlier because I'm sure I can think of a hundred things that I can't do. I can't dance. I can't sing. How about I'm that? I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> I mean, but you probably could. I think maybe I could possibly sing if I had started young enough. Now that my vocal cords are not so young anymore, I get kind of raspy. But no way could I have been, ever been a dancer. Really? No. So this... I, don't, I don't have the body for it. Really? don't have the bones for it. No, the joints for it. But isn't it funny how you express on your dolls all those joints? Mm -hmm. And how things keep. Oh, my, that's why my dolls are. That's why this one is a dancer. It's a frustration of mine. This one, too. She's a dancer. She's a dancer, too. I would too. love to have been a dancer. <laughs> now I can beat one through my dolls. You can. You can. Well, I so appreciate you being here. You're from up north, Potter Valley. Mm -hmm. And that's north. That is Ukiah, or is that north of Ukiah? That's north of Ukiah, another 20 minutes north of Ukiah. Okay. Well, you are coming back. And all I can say is that I wish you continued success. There's nobody like you. I really, I have never in my life, I'll, I cannot get over this. Oh, and I'm you, so excited about it. And of course, I want to thank my crew. We're all volunteers. I'd rather be a volunteer than try to do one of these. I still can't get over it. Um, and of course, I want to thank our viewers for watching. What would we do without you? Furthermore, I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.